You want to see what you're going to get? Here's what you're going to get. I am very excited and a little nervous for this video. I am releasing a brand new plugin for DaVinci Resolve, and I might use plugin and preset interchangeably because the lines get a little blurred. But I'm a little nervous because yes, I want this video and the plugin to do well. I want it to get some good exposure and be useful to the channel, but I also really want you all to like it. This preset ended up being pretty special to me. And if you'll indulge me for just a little bit, I would love to tell you a little about the inspiration for the plugin and how it ended up being pretty important to my journey here on YouTube. If that's not what you're here for, I totally get it. A timestamp will be in the description to jump right ahead to the fun stuff. Good, good. I'm sure most, if not all of you, have had the experience of something being so foundational or influential to you that when you talk to someone that doesn't have that shared experience, you're kind of taken aback. Some of them are a little trivial, like, oh, you didn't have to shovel snow all winter to get out of your driveway? Yeah, that was weird. To more involved, like, oh, you weren't heavily involved in your high school's Latin club going to conventions and all of that to say that one of those highly influential things to me, especially in my progress of learning to edit video, was videocopilot.net. If you don't know about videocopilot.net, it's a lot and all of it is very cool. Here's what you need to know. In 2005, this really cool guy, Andrew Kramer, started creating After Effects tutorials and hosting them on his own website, videocopilot.net. And if I go to the tutorials page now and scroll through, it's just bangers all the way down. So useful, so imaginative in the way he takes all these standard stock effects in After Effects and remixes them and puts them together to create something completely new and original. And I ate them all up. My senior year in high school, I got my school to let me take an independent study that was just me sitting in a room watching video co-pilot tutorials for an entire semester. It was great. And from tutorials, Andrew expanded to stuff like stock footage, stuff like this. This is Action Essentials 2, a collection of action-focused stock footage, smoke effects, fire explosions, bullet hits, and blood splatter, all of it. It rocks. I'm pretty sure I asked for this for Christmas one year. But then videocopilot.net started creating their own plugins for After Effects. And of course, these are all amazing, but we're going to focus on one specific plugin, Saber. And even if you've never heard of videocopilot.net, I'm sure you have seen this plugin in the wild. It's all over the place, even just in the gaming and streaming space. Summit 1G uses it in his highlight videos, and Dr. Disrespect uses it in his YouTube end screens. And those are just two really blatant examples that instantly popped out to me. I'm sure it's used hundreds of other places as well. So I've spent untold hours on videocopilot.net, and it absolutely served as an inspiration to me when I decided that I wanted to start creating my own video tutorials. And as you've definitely put together, Saber kind of looks pretty similar to what my new preset is doing. And yes, that's the point. I wanted to recreate the Saber plugin in DaVinci Resolve, both to provide a useful tool to Resolve editors, but also to serve as a little homage to the massive role that Video Copilot played in getting me into video work at all. Now, does my plugin look as good as Saber? <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, Saber is built on the absolute magic of one of Video Copilot's previous plugins, Color Vibrance. And it just makes everything look so good. The way it handles glow is amazing. I can't wrap my mind around it. I couldn't recreate it. But my goal in this plugin was to bring as much of the functionality of the Saber plugin as I could to Resolve with the knowledge that I have now. So let's take a look at what you can do in my new free DaVinci Resolve plugin, Proto. Okay, my new plugin lives here in the effects library in generators, and it's this Proto effect. You can drag this to the timeline, and by default, it will create a five second long duration. And all your main controls for this effect will live over here in the inspector. Now, right off the bat, this plugin ships with five included presets noted up here by this version tab. You'll see right now it is on five and I can click through these to get a little sample of some of the different effects we can achieve. I'm pretty preferential to this purple one. It also has a little bit of like a, a wobbly stuff going on. It's pretty cool. 
underneath that the first setting we have is source by default this is on text but you can also choose rectangle circle or just a simple line and this line you'll see it goes off screen a little bit but if you come down to this drop down you can go to fusion overlay and then if you zoom out you can actually see the two sides of this line have own little controls and you can drag these anywhere you want and all of those sources have individual source controls if i hop over to rectangle you can see that i can change the width and the height i can even round these corners or rotate this however i want same with the circle different width and height controls for the line we have just those two points since that is all a line consists of and we have text controls you can change this to say whatever you want and change the font size and tracking a note on fonts there seems to be some funkiness in the way that fusion treats fonts it treats them separately than it does on the edit page this is really clearly seen in the difference between the text effect on the edit page and the text plus effect, which brings in the full power of the text plus node from the fusion page. Some fonts work in the text effect, but not the text plus effect. I don't know why, but here, because we are pulling in fusion and pulling in a text plus node, um, you'll just have to be a little selective on your fonts and double check to see if you want to use a specific one, whether it will work here or not. And moving on from here to demonstrate, I'm actually going to go back to our version one preset come down to text just change this over to a nice little proto and bring that down before we move on to our further controls underneath that you have this master control first being these main color options you can bring down these sliders or use the color picker to go to any specific color and I want to specifically call out here a sort of best practice. This effect really requires bright lights. And I don't have a great way right now to do that really natural looking bright, almost pure white core that really beautifully goes out to a color. So if you're bringing down any of these red, green, or blue sliders, I would urge you not to bring them too far below a third, maybe even keep them up to half and use that leeway to push the color whichever way you want it. Why, if I want this a nice blue with a little bit of that green to bring up the bright brightness, that looks great. And then on top of that, we have master glow gain and size settings. If I crank this up, you'll see that that will become quite brighter or down. And then we even have a control on how far out we want that glow to go as well. And we're gonna come back to C3 wind speed and direction, but to demonstrate this effect position and length, I'm gonna come up here and change our source back to rectangle. So effect position and length. If you use these, you probably want to adjust length first. And what this will do is it tracks the entire distance around uh, either the rectangle, the circle, or across the line. And if you pull down length, it'll start to scale back along this path. And then, so if I were to scale that back up and then change the position, it would rotate that over the entire mask that's being used. And this works across, like I said, rectangle, circle, and line. So if I go to circle and just pull down this length, so it's just a sliver, and then navigate this around, you'll see that this just circles around the edge. And this is a great time to get into a tip if you're actually using this effect because of the way Fusion works. If you're on the edit page, you are seeing a full quality output from the Fusion page. But there are some tools in the Fusion page to speed up your working process. You'll see right now, if I pull this effect position, it's pretty laggy. It doesn't help that I'm also screen recording. But if I hop into the Fusion page by clicking this icon, You'll see here I have this stack of nodes that represents this effect. I'll click that and I'll have all those same controls in the inspector in the fusion page. So I can come down to position and length. But before I change anything, I'm going to right click next to these controls here and I'm gonna uncheck high quality motion blur and I'm gonna right click again and turn on proxy. And now if I change this position, you'll see that we have much smoother playback. So especially if you're iterating on this really quick and trying different things, adjusting these controls in the Fusion page can be much faster. But like I said, position will shift this around and length will either grow or shrink this entire effect. And if you hop over to line, if I pull the position back down to zero and the length down to zero, 
and then just pull the length up to one, you'll see you get that supernatural, almost lightsaber effect of it filling up the entire line. I'm gonna hop back to circle and continue down our effects to where you have the effect controls. This is a lot of the main power and customization options you have for this effect. You have two sets of controls for the core and two sets of controls for the glow. And you'll see in this version one, these are all set to zero. This is a great place to start so you can see what each one does. And you do need a mix of these to get any effect. If you pull up any one of these individually, even all the way up, you won't see a change. And that is because they interact with each other. So I'm going to pull up contrast and then pull up scale and pull up detail a little bit. And now you can start to see what's happening. Once you have these up a little bit, you can really dial back the entire effect just by pulling back contrast. So you see, we start with a circle and as we pull this up, we are getting this really like energy type distortion around the edge. And then you can change the look of it by adjusting all these sliders in relation to each other. So the detail will give you a lot more finer detail in these edges here. If you want it to be simpler or wobbly jelly, you can pull that down. And a similar thing happens with scale. If I pull up detail, if I pull down the scale, you'll get more simple wobbly, but if I pull up the scale, you'll get a lot more fine details here. And then you have a second copy of the core, same thing as well. You'll see we still have a core there. If I pull down this one there, pull up the scale, pull up the detail, you'll see that that starts to affect that brighter core there. And again, I can pull that back up. I'll even pull down this first set of scales all the way, and you'll see that only using these second controls now, we are creating a similar thing with that other little closer to white core there. And these sliders by default do have an upper limit, but you can manually enter any number here and it will increase the effect up to that factor of whatever number you put in. So now if I want a really electrical thing on both of these, you'll see that gets pretty crazy, but I'm gonna bring all these down again and move on to our outer glow setting. You'll see we have a glow one control, glow two control. And you'll see we have this nice sort of mellow glow out front, but I'm gonna zoom in here and again, bring all of these up for this glow one detail. And now you can start to see what's happening. See that if I have contrast up a little bit and I pull up scale, you'll start to see a bit of the texture here. And even to help us show this, what I'm gonna do now is create a new black background. So disconnect this. So we're gonna have this effect over a black background. And here you can really see what we're doing. This extra texture here is from that glow one controls. And you can see I can make it more pronounced with contrast. I can bring up or down the detail. If I want it just more almost out of focus or a little blurry, not blurry, but just less detail. And the scale will be the overall scale of this effect, how finely packed all of this is. And we have that, that's for the closer effect, but you can still see the sort of outer ring here and that is this glow too. So again, I can bring up the detail, bring up the contrast, and I'll even pull down this one so we can focus on that. And now you see you have this outer ring where you can really pull up the scale as well. And so with all of these, you can mix and match these to your heart's desire and especially with color, get all sorts of funky stuff. But now we can go back to master control and look at some of these other options we skipped earlier including seethe rate. If I have seethe rate and wind speed down, you'll see that if I just scrub through my timeline, nothing changes at all. There is no animation here. But if I pull up the seethe rate a little bit and I'm playing through its caching, but it's going pretty slow. And if I play this back now that it's cached a little bit, you'll see that this seethe rate adds a really cool natural organic motion to this energy effect. But we also have this wind speed effect. If I pull that up just a little bit, You'll see that now, especially if we look at the texture in this background glow, I'll pull this up, make it a little more pronounced. Not only is it moving in that natural way, but you can see the texture is sliding off to the right. And that is what this wind direction control does. By default, the wind will move to the right. If you change this to 90, you'll see that now the background texture is scaling up. And one of our effects, my sort of fire preset E, version two has that included. This highly textured background, as you go forward, it slides up like it is fire, like it's acting naturally. 
And that is a super quick overview just of the controls you have. And as you can see, there are so many ways to mix and match these. Now, I do wanna give one more tip. You see that by default, you have these versions. And as soon as you drag it on your timeline, any progress you change will keep between these presets. You'll see if I go to this preset two or three, or even when I was messing around in five, it saved the changes I made to that. And if I go back to one, it saves what we did with this circle. But that is only saved on this instance of the effect. If I were to bring on a new copy of the effect, go to that and go to preset one, you would see it's back to its default. But if you create an effect you really like and you wanna save it, here's how you can do it. You can come up here to view, come down to show power bins. You can select that and it will add the power bins here in your media pool. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm even gonna do a click new bin inside this power bin and type proto. So this is an empty bin and you can select this effect on your timeline, drag it into that bin and it will save it here. And then if I pull that effect back a new instance to the timeline, if I go to that, you'll see I'm on version one and all the changes we made have been set. If you're gonna be reusing an effect or you just create an effect you really like, this is a great way to save it. Whew. And that is version one of Proto. And yes, I am saying version one, I have, definite plans for a lot of things I want to add for this effect. I've been messing around with it for a while, going back, editing things, tweaking things. I already have a list of things I want to change or improve or features I want to add, but I had to get this out into the wild. But for now, there's only one more thing I want to show you, and that is back on the Fusion page. If you're over your effect, you can click this button up here to open the effect in the Fusion page, and you will see that our effect is represented by this stacked node here. And if you double click on that, you will see this. This is the effect. This is how I built it. You can go through node by node. I'm sure some of it will be confusing, especially some of the expressions and stuff I had to do to get the controls all set up. But this is one of my favorite things about Fusion. I put together this crazy effect and you can open it right up and see bit by bit how it was made. And this is also a great place if you want to tweak any setting at all. Right now, the glow settings are fixed to a set amount of blur, but if you wanted to change those, you could hop right in here, trace through the node tree, find out exactly where those glow settings are and increase or decrease the blur or any other color settings or the glow setting. All of that is available to you here. But I did try to make it as easy to use as possible on the edit page or in the fusion page where it might be a little easier to work. So that is my new free preset proto. It is free and available to download today. A link will be in the description to my buy me a coffee page where the effect is hosted there as a pay what you want extra. If you're interested in the future development of this plugin, I recommend you find me on Twitter. I'm sure I'll be posting there about any exciting updates. And of course, if you wanna keep learning about Fusion, I have several videos on my channel for beginners and tons of more free downloads and full walkthroughs of those as well. If you're interested in any of that, please consider subscribing. Thanks, I'll see you next time.